a while back I uh, acquired this beautiful gun here and added it to my collection. The uh, FX Crown Mark II GRS in the Nordic Wolf configuration. Really beautiful gun and it even performs perfectly out on the bench. I also posted some pictures on Instagram with some groupings with the hybrid slugs at 100 meters and people were asking me at what kind of velocity I was shooting them. I'm shooting them with a 700 millimeter barrel at just at about 960 feet per second, 955, something like this. And people were saying, but how did you get this power? Because when I received mine in the beginning, it, they were only shooting about 890 feet per second, if I'm not mistaken, even with the regulator set to 145 bar like it is right now. The only way how to achieve this is by adjusting your, your uh, internal adjustment on your hammer spring and that's easily done by removing the stock for just a second, adjusting that little uh, Allen, key, uh, Allen screw like you see on the FX Impact, replacing your stock and you will get there with ease. So in this video I will be showing you how to remove the GRS stock from your Mark II, adjust the internal adjustment, replace your stock and then we'll run some numbers. Alright guys, before we remove the stock, a safe rifle to work on is a safe environment. So always make sure your rifle is not cocked, there are no pellets in the breech and it has been put unsafe. So, before we can remove the stock, we will have to remove certain items like the uh, safety lever you see here, the power wheel and a few screws at the bottom in order to be able to slide the action out of the stock. The first one we'll address is that safety, which is a 25 millimeter. Easily undo it with the screw you have there, right in the middle of the safety. Hold the safety lifter down with your hands, much easier. Lift it up just like this. And let me take a small little Allen key, because there is a little o-ring in the bottom there. And that o-ring is not there to seal anything, but it's there to create friction when you tighten down on the screw for your uh, safety lever to have a nice positive click between fire and safe. Put that o-ring back so you don't forget it afterwards or you don't jam it in the hole. Put this to the side for one second, make sure you don't lose it. Then let's turn the rifle around. Second thing we will remove is that power wheel, a nice 23 uh, position power wheel on the Crown Mark II GRS. In the middle of the power wheel you have a 2mm allen key that can be easily undone by holding down the power wheel. Let's first find like this. Hold down on the power wheel, undo the screw. The reason you have to hold down on the power wheel is because there are two ball bearings and when you lift it up you have to be very careful with two little springs underneath and as you can see there the two ball bearings that nicely stick into place thanks to some grease underneath the power wheel and you've got two springs there that uh, are pushing on those ball bearings and give that nice positive click when turning your power wheel. Now make sure you don't lose the springs as well they should stay in place with the grease as well put everything to the side Make sure you don't lose that little allen key as well. And then we we'll focus our attention to the bottom. You have two screws at the bottom. One is located right here behind the trigger. I believe it's a three millimeter. As you can see, I don't torque down my screws a lot. They are uh, fairly finger tight, so make sure you don't ruin anything on this nice beautiful stock. Should be undone completely. It's a fairly long screw if I'm not mistaken. Now oh, the trigger guard is coming with it, that's why. If it's loose, it's actually good enough. We'll see, but it's good enough. Then we have this big one in the front right here. That's a four millimeter, if I'm not mistaken. Just take it out. 
like this. Sometimes that copper cup that protects uh, torquing it down against the nice beautiful stock comes with it, but mine stays nicely in place. Put the screw safely to the side. And now when you want to lift out your action from the stock, it's very uh, crucial you do it gradually and very carefully because the gauges cutouts are nicely done, very tightly, which makes for a beautiful look, but taking it out of the stock, you have to be very careful. You don't uh, do it crooked, otherwise you risk pinching your gauges. So let's go wiggle, wiggle, step by step. And as you can see, it comes out nicely. And there you have it, that's your stock removed. Put it safely to the side and we'll have a look at the, the internal adjustable hammer spring. So with the stock to the side, it's very crucial. We replace the power wheel for a second in order to uh, adjust it properly. So we take the power wheel, put it on as you took it off, making sure the ball bearings stay in place. Drop the screw in. Like this, make sure it clicks nicely. And now the Crown Mark II is a lot easier than the impact to, uh, to tune. Let's say you have your regulator, which is located right behind your gauge here, which also is accessible, as accessible from the outside through a tiny cutout in the stock. And for the rest, the only thing you can uh, change out is your uh, internal adjustment of the hammer spring, of course. So when mine came to me, it was fairly loose and I was getting about uh, 900 feet per second with the 700 millimeter and 22 uh, grain uh, hybrid slugs. So I wanted to up the power a little bit. That's why I have adjusted the internal hammer spring to when I put it on 23. There is just a tiny amount of play on it. I'm never over cranking it. I don't know if you can hear it. I can just wiggle it a little bit. And that's fairly easy done by taking a one and a half millimeter Allen key, like you would do on, a, on an FX impact. You stick that Allen key down into the hole there. There is a tiny uh, Allen key running all the way through. And uh, cranking it down, screwing it out, will increase your uh, adjustment on your uh, power wheel. Counterclockwise will take that uh, Allen key back out and reduces the power on your power wheel. Very easily done. And I just mine close to max out. And this yields me with the 700 millimeter barrel and the 22 uh, grain hybrid slugs just at about, I believe, 960 feet per second, which is pretty cool. On the regulator, I've set it to, let's see what the gauge is, 144 bar for the moment, 105, 145 bar. So if I will want, I can even push, I believe, some 25 or 26 grain slugs, put that regulator to 160, and with a 700 millimeter barrel, probably I can also shoot them at 960 feet per second. So enough power right there. To reassemble it very easily, we're gonna remove the power wheel again. Hold it down, unscrew it. Make sure you take it all the way out, like this. Make sure you don't throw the screw away like I do. Make sure the ball bearings stay in place. Put it safely to the side for a second. Take your stock and same here. The hole, of course, aligns there. The trigger guard should align with your uh, trigger blade. Guide it in nice and straight. There shouldn't be any resistance or a little bit of resistance, but not a lot. Make sure it completely seats like this. Then I like to start off with a three millimeter screw you have here in the bottom. That screw goes all the way into the action block. Finger tight is good enough for me. 
Then I take that bigger bolt that goes into that uh, cup right there with a four millimeter. Like this. Then we'll take our power wheel and our gauge, uh, our screw, sorry. Turn it. Usually, if you don't remember at which position you took it off, the ball bearings should always be in line, as you can see, where the location of the two springs are. So always put those ball bearings back where those springs have to be. That's kind of logical, I think. Put it back on. If you can't put it back on, just push back on the internal adjustment. Let me show you maybe a little bit close up. If it sticks out like this, you won't be able to put uh, the cam of your power wheel back on. So make sure you push it a little bit backwards so there is room enough for that cam to sit right there. Take the power wheel, gently drop it in like this. The screw into the hole. And then you screw in your screw. Don't have to force it down. You have to make sure the power wheel still moves freely. Check it. Perfect. And then the last thing we'll have to install is our safety again. So let me turn the rifle around. I took the safety off in the safe position. Make sure I have the right Allen key. This one. Make sure that little o-ring is in place. I don't know if you can see it very well. There is a uh, rectangular cutout, and from uh, because I took it off in safe, that rectangular is in uh, the horizontal position. So I will drop it back into the horizontal position, like this. Start screwing the screw in while holding the safety lever. And you will feel the resistance of that little o-ring and you get a nice positive click which is good so everything still works safety works the power wheel works same here never operate your power wheel when your rifle is cocked very important otherwise you might ruin uh, the screw inside or the cam on your uh, power wheel So now I've shown you how to remove the stock and replace it again, adjust your internal hammer spring. It's time to put it over the chronograph and see what kind of numbers we get with that 380 millimeter barrel as well with the 700. I'll be using some JSB pellets and some uh, slugs like the hybrids or maybe some javelins. So let's get back to the normal view. So first up, I have some uh, 18 grain JSB pellets. Load it up a few, not too much. I will start off at setting number 23, that will be full power. Make sure I'm high enough for my pellet trap. Yes, just like this. 957. A little bit too hot for some pellets. 969 even. So let's drop it down to setting number 16, I'm guessing. 882. 880. Perfect sweet spot for some pellets. 882. 882 again. 884. 884. Super consistent. 880. 880. Super consistent, even with a pin probe that I have installed from Yuma Air in this uh, uh, FX crown because I mainly want to shoot some slugs out of it. So let me quickly decock it. Uh, what else? Let me load up some uh, JSB monsters and see what kind of velocity it will produce with that short 380mm barrel. So we got some 
JSB Monster redesigns, those are 25 grains, so with that short 380 millimeter barrel, I'm not expecting too much out of it. But let's put it on setting number 23. You can feel when you cock it that the hammer spring tension is a lot more than on 16. Make sure I'm aiming at my pallet trap. 834, it's a little bit on the low side, I find. Consistent it is without any question. Uh, probably if I would up the regulator to maybe 160 bar, they would fly at about 850 feet per second out of the 380 millimeter, which is also not too bad. So the last thing I want to uh, try with that uh, short 380 millimeter barrel are some FX hybrids at setting number 23 to see if we can achieve some 900 uh, feet per second, which I doubt probably a little bit less. And I think the FX hybrids should be shot out of a 500 or a 700 millimeter barrel in the uh, FX Crown Mark II. But let me quickly load up a magazine with some FX hybrid slugs and see what kind of velocity we get there. All right, so I loaded up some hybrid slugs Four of them, it seems, maybe miscounted, thought of it was five. We are at setting 23 again. Make sure I'm aiming at my pellet trap. Eight seventy-five. 864. 864. 868 also consistent enough but 860 is not enough for some slugs i had some good results with uh, knockouts even at uh, uh, with some uh, fx hybrids even at 820 feet per second i believe but i like to shoot them rather at about 930 to 960 feet per second to get the best accuracy out of them so what else can i do let me swap for the 700 millimeter barrel and do the same test again so quickly install the 700 millimeter barrel as you can see I know it looks a little bit funny, a 700mm barrel on this beautiful rifle, but at the bench it doesn't really matter actually. Um, I thought to do the same test all over again, but with some uh, 18 grain pellets it's just a matter of fact of turning down the power wheel in order to get to that 880 feet per second sweet spot for some pellets. So I straight away loaded up some hybrid slugs at setting number 23. Let's load them up. Make sure I'm aiming for my pellet trap. 953. 953. 962. 962, a little bit off. 962. Probably because I just refilled the air cylinder, maybe. Super consistent, as you can see, and that were five shots. That first shot probably because I just refilled my uh, cylinder to do this test. Um, maybe something else interesting to, uh, to see is that the uh, monster redesigns, where did I put them? Oh, here they are. Maybe I can load up another magazine with those monster redesigns in 25 grains, turn down a little bit on the power wheel and see um, at which position we can get 880 feet per second or even 900 feet per second with the, uh, the monster redesigns. So let me quickly load up and I'll be right back with you. So I got some monster redesigns. We're now at setting 23. 937, 937 either even with some 25 grains. Uh, so it means you can shoot the knockout slugs at about the same velocity, 930 feet per second, which is also a pretty good velocity for some knockout slugs. But these are JSB Monster redesigns. Let's do another one. Again, 930. They uh, should be accurate, even above the 900s, I've heard. So let's dial it back to 20 to see where we're at. 884. Eight eighty seven. Eight hundred eighty seven. 
Well guys, that's it for this video. As you could see, it's very easy to up the internal adjustment on your uh, hammer spring and easily boost the power on your Crown Mark II. And I'm not even stretching the limits on this one as my regulator is only at about 147 bar and you can boost it even to 160 with some very consistent results as you could see in the video. I hope this was very interesting for some of you. If you would like to know how to adjust your internal hammer spring, I thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I catch you back in the next one. Bye.